The European theater of World War II was one of the two main theaters of combat during World War II. It saw heavy fighting across Europe for almost six years, starting with Germany's invasion of Poland on September 1, 1939 and ending with the Western Allies conquering most of Western Europe, the Soviet Union conquering most of Eastern Europe and Germany's unconditional surrender on May 8, 1945, 9th of May and the Soviet Union, but fighting still occurred on the Eastern Front until 11th of May. 1945 with the surrender of Nazi Germany's armed forces elsewhere in Europe. The Allied powers fought the Axis powers on two major fronts, the Eastern Front and Western Front, as well as in a strategic bombing offensive and in the adjoining Mediterranean and Middle East theater. Germany and the Soviet Union were sworn enemies, but following the Munich Agreement, which effectively handed over Czechoslovakia, a French and Soviet ally, and the only remaining presidential democracy in Central Europe, to Germany, political realities allowed the Soviet Union to sign a non-aggression pact, the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, including a secret clause partitioning Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia and Finland between the two spheres of influence. Full-scale war in Europe began at dawn on September 1, 1939 when Germany used so-called blitzkrieg tactics and military strength to invade Poland, to which both the United Kingdom and France had pledged protection and independence guarantees. On September 3, 1939, Britain and France declared war on Germany, and other allies soon followed. The British Expeditionary Force was sent to France, however, neither French nor British troops gave any significant assistance to the Poles during the entire invasion and the German-French border, excepting the Saar offensive, remained mostly calm. This period of the war is commonly known as the Phony War. On 17 September the Soviet forces joined the invasion of Poland, although remaining neutral with respect to Western powers. The Polish government evacuated the country for Romania. Poland fell within five weeks with its last large operational units surrendering on 6 October after the Battle of Koch. As the Polish September campaign ended, Hitler offered Britain and France peace on the basis of recognition of German-European continental dominance. On 12 October the United Kingdom formally refused. Despite the quick campaign in the East, along the Franco-German frontier the war settled into a quiet period. This relatively non-confrontational and mostly non-fighting period between the major powers lasted until Germany launched an invasion on May 10, 1940. Several other countries, however, were drawn into the conflict at this time. After September 28, 1939, the Soviet government presented the governments of Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania with ultimatums threatening with military invasion thus compelling the three small nations to conclude mutual assistance pacts which gave the Soviets the right to establish military bases there. The Soviet Union issued similar demands also to Finland in October 1939 that were however rejected, leading to the Soviets' invasion of Finland on 30 November, starting the Winter War. The Soviet Union did not accomplish its goal of annexing Finland. 25. In the ensuing Moscow Peace Treaty, Finland ceded 9% of its territory, including parts of Karelia and Sala. The Finns were embittered over having lost more land in the peace than on the battlefields, and over the perceived lack of world sympathy. Meanwhile, in western Scandinavia, Germany invaded Denmark and Norway in April 1940, and in response, Britain occupied the Faroe Islands, a Danish territory, and invaded and occupied Iceland, a sovereign nation with the King of Denmark as its monarch. Sweden was able to remain neutral. The Baltic republics were occupied by the Soviet army in June 1940, and formally annexed to the Soviet Union in August 1940. On 10 of May the phony war ended with a sweeping German invasion of the neutral low countries of Belgium, the Netherlands, and Luxembourg, and into France bypassing the French fortifications of the Maginot Line along the border with Germany. After overrunning the Netherlands, Belgium, and Luxembourg, Germany turned against France, entering the country through the Ardennes on 13 May, the French had left this area less well defended, believing its terrain to be impassable for tanks and other vehicles. 
most Allied forces were in Flanders, anticipating a rerun of the World War I Schlieffen plan, and were cut off from the French mainland. As a result of this, as well as the superior German communications and tactics, the Battle of France lasted only six weeks, far shorter than what virtually all pre-war Allied thought could have conceived. On 10 June Italy declared war on both France and the United Kingdom but did not gain any significant success in this campaign. The French government fled Paris, and soon, France surrendered on 22nd of June. In order to further the humiliation of the French people and the country itself, Hitler arranged for the surrender document to be signed in the forest of Compiègne, in the same railway coach where the German surrender had been signed in 1918. The surrender divided France into two major parts, the northern part under German control, and a southern part under French control, based at Vichy and referred to as Vichy France, a rump state friendly to Germany. Many French soldiers, as well as those of other occupied countries, escaped to Britain. The General de Gaulle proclaimed himself the legitimate leader of free France and vowed to continue to fight. Following the unexpected swift victory, Hitler promoted twelve generals to the rank of field marshal during the 1940 field marshal ceremony. Vyacheslav Molotov, the foreign policy minister of the USSR, which was tied with Soviet-German non-aggression treaty, congratulated the Germans, we hand over the most cordial congratulations by the Soviet government on the occasion of splendid success of German Wehrmacht. Guderian's tanks broke through to the sea near Abo, powered by Soviet fuel, the German bombs, that raised Rotterdam to the ground, were filled with Soviet pyroxylin, and bullet cases, which hit the British soldiers retreating from Dunkirk, were cast of Soviet cupro-nickel alloy. Later, on April 24, 1941, the USSR gave full diplomatic recognition to the Vichy government situated in the non-occupied zone in France. Thus, the fall of France left Britain and the Commonwealth to stand alone. The British Prime Minister, Neville Chamberlain, resigned during the battle and was replaced by Winston Churchill. Much of Britain's army escaped capture from the northern French port of Dunkirk, where hundreds, if not thousands, of tiny civilian boats were used to ferry troops from the beaches to the waiting warships. There is much debate over whether German panzer divisions could have defeated these soldiers alone if they had pressed forward since the tank divisions were overextended and would require extensive refitting, in any case, Hitler elected to follow the advice of the leader of German air forces Hermann Goering and allow the Luftwaffe alone to attack the Allied forces until German infantry was able to advance, giving the British a window for the evacuation. Later, many of the evacuated troops would form an important part in the center of the army that landed at Normandy on D-Day. The British rejected several covert German attempts to negotiate peace. Germany massed their air force in northern German-occupied France to prepare the way for a possible invasion, codenamed Operation Silo, Sea Lion, deeming that air superiority was essential for the invasion. The operations of the Luftwaffe against the Royal Air Force became known as the Battle of Britain. Initially, the Luftwaffe concentrated on destroying the RAF on the ground and in the air. They later switched to bombing major and large industrial British cities in the Blitz, in an attempt to draw RAF fighters out and defeat them completely. Neither approach was successful in reducing the RAF to the point where air superiority could be obtained, and plans for an invasion were suspended by September 1940. During the Blitz, all of Britain's major industrial, cathedral, and political sites were heavily bombed. London suffered particularly, being bombed each night for several months. Prior to the war Italy had invaded Albania and officially annexed it. Mussolini's regime declared war on Britain and France on June 10, 1940, and invaded Greece on 28 October. However, Italian forces were unable to match the Nazi successes in northwest Europe, in fact, it was not until German intervention that Greece was overrun by the Axis powers. While the Greek campaign was underway, German forces, supported by the Italians, Hungarians and the Bulgarians simultaneously invaded Yugoslavia. After the mainland was conquered, Germany invaded Crete in what is known as the Battle of Crete. With the Balkans secure, 
Germany and her allies attacked the Soviet Union in the largest land operation in history. The Balkans campaign delayed this invasion, and subsequent resistance movements in Albania, Yugoslavia and Greece tied up valuable Axis forces. This provided much needed and possibly decisive relief for the Soviets. Citation needed. Fighting in southern Europe did not resume until Axis forces were defeated in North Africa. Following the Axis defeat in Africa, Allied forces invaded Italy and during a prolonged campaign fought their way north through Italy. The invasion of Italy resulted in the nation switching sides to the Allies and the ousting of Mussolini. But, in spite of this coup, fascists and occupying German forces retained possession of the northern half of Italy. In the northern part of Italy, the occupying Germans installed Mussolini as the head of the new fascist republican government, the Italian Social Republic or RSI to show that the Axis forces were still in power there and a force to be dealt with. But Mussolini and his fascists were now puppet rulers under their German patrons. On the opposite side of the Adriatic Sea the Allied, and mostly pro-Soviet, National Liberation Army of Yugoslavia, which got some supplies and assistance from Western allies, battled the Axis powers. In late 1944 it was joined by the advancing Soviet army and proceeded to push the remaining German forces out of the Balkans. By April 1945, German forces were retreating on all fronts in northern Italy and occupied Yugoslavia, following continuous Allied attacks. The campaign and the fighting in the Mediterranean and Middle East theater came to an end on 29 April. On 2 May in Italy, Field Marshal Heinrich von Fiedinghoff, the commander-in-chief of all German forces in the country surrendered to Field Marshal Harold Alexander, the supreme commander of all Allied forces in the Mediterranean area. However, in a preview of the Cold War fighting continued in Greece where a civil war broke out and lasted until the end of 1949 when Greek government troops, aided by the U.S. and Britain, defeated the communist guerrillas supported by Marshal Tito and USSR. On June 22, 1941, Germany launched the invasion of the Soviet Union, codenamed Operation Barbarossa. 31. This invasion, the biggest in recorded history, started the bloodiest conflict in world history, the Axis-Soviet War, also known as the Eastern Front. It is generally accepted as being the most lethal conflict in human history, with over 30 million dead as a result. It involved more land combat than all other World War II theaters combined. On the very night of the invasion Soviet troops received a directive undersigned by Marshal Timoshenko and General of the Army Georgi Zhukov that commanded, do not answer to any provocations and do not undertake any actions without specific orders. The early weeks of the invasion were devastating for the Soviet army. Enormous numbers of Soviet troops were encircled in pockets and fell into Nazi German hands. In addition to German troops, Italian, Hungarian, Romanian and Finnish troops were also involved in the campaign. Finland initially declared neutrality, however, with both German and Soviet troops on her soil, Finland was prepared to join forces with Germany when the Soviet Union attacked Finland on 25 June. The following conflict from 1941 to 1944 is sometimes referred to as the Continuation War, as in the continuation of the Winter War. Spain, under the fascist dictator Francisco Franco, immediately offered military assistance to the Axis effort by sending volunteers known as the Blue Division to the Eastern Front. Operation Barbarossa suffered from several fundamental flaws. The most serious of these was the logistical situation of the attack. The sheer vastness of the distances in the Soviet Union meant that Germany could only advance so far before outrunning their supply chains. By the time the German attack froze to a halt before the city of Moscow on December 5, 1941, it literally could not go any further. There simply were not enough supplies reaching the front to conduct proper defensive operations, let alone a proper offense. A crucial mistake on the part of Germany was that the timetable for Barbarossa was planned with the assumption that the Soviets would collapse before the onset of winter. During their long retreat, the Soviets employed a scorched earth policy. They burned crops and destroyed utilities as they withdrew before Germany's advance, 
which contributed to the logistical problems that Germany experienced.